Celeste. What is there to be said that hasn't been repeated about it in the last 5 years? Everyone adores and is very attached to this cult platformer classic. And yet I've never played it before because I hated it. But if I hated it, why do I regret avoiding Celeste for 5 years? The last beginning is basically how I expected it to be. Cheesy title screen, turning off photosensitive stuff, and turning off screen shape because it's lazy game design. We'll get back to that eventually. After creating a new save file, I immediately dropped it to the first obstacle and properly complained about Among Us saying it almost hit her when she was clearly got dead by the conveniently shaped rock. And after talking to some old hag, I was there, at chapter 7 of the game. Just kidding. Here we go, the start of the metaphor of the developer's old knife, chapter 1. But why a metaphor? Well, many people have different reasons for feeling the need to climb a mountain or climb a virtual mountain, but Celeste is clear from the first few chapters that Among Us is here to overcome their anxiety and depression and evolve as a person, which we'll talk about in greater detail later. For now, chapter 1 is the very clear beginning with little obstacles as the player learns to dash, a completely original mechanic when Celeste came out, although for some reason the game doesn't teach you how to walk, but it does teach you how to dash. Something not copied nearly as much is Among Us' other ability, climbing. I can definitely see why, as climbing is almost never used leverly in the game. Keep that on the back of your mind. Chapter 2 is where the real metaphors begin, with Among Us being introduced to Battleline. No idea why they didn't have the budget to just call her B Among Us instead of Battleline, but I digress. Since you now know what a button is, the game starts to demand more of you while staying fair. The level design with the Shadow Clone clones is stellar and I was really enjoying this part of the game a lot. In fact, this chapter as a whole is the biggest highlight of the game for me since its level design is at least the least lazy. Foreshadow is a narrative device in which a storyteller gives something else I also really like is how absolutely cheesy it can be. Seriously, I was laughing the moment Bellanen said her trademark wine liner, probably because I can't really take storyline seriously when they break the fourth wall to give more impact, even though I associate that with humor, so it doesn't really work. Chapter 3 is whether I was debating to make this video at all. It's not necessarily bad, it's just that... Oh hey, my least favorite chapter of the game, that's awesome! It's so sad that Amogus died of Prego. And also why I'm getting why am I getting respawn all the way back there? That's kind of annoying. I guess because I hate chapter 3, the game is saying, nope, I will make you like chapter 3, no matter what. Easiest B-side tape. Actually the easiest, like the other ones of chapter 3 and 2 and 3 were harder. I was expecting a strawberry but. In that occasion, I don't necessarily mind that the level design doesn't tell me Oh hey, there's a strawberry here, because at least I'm not missing out on it. There are a lot of strawberries that I've missed throughout my play playthrough just because I couldn't go back to get them. That just frustrates me. Oh yeah, right, this is the funniest thing ever. You could theoretically get hit there, then have to jump here, and you will be, be absolutely screwed. I don't remember what happened in chapter 4 anymore apart from funny among us suddenly changing from surprised emote to dying emote because of Windows XP clouds. And don't get me wrong, I more than get they were trying to picture how the smallest thing can break you when you are in the wrong headspace. But the way it was executed doesn't really convey that and instead conveys that among us is feeling fine then suddenly is exhausted like in chapter 1 and then is crying for her life. Considering Celeste is thought of one of the most polished indie games of all time, you would surely think that they could have used Theo falling beforehand and getting hurt as an excuse to give Among Us a new set of sprites just for this cousin so that the transition to them looking worried looks more natural. Just like they did in Battleland in chapter 2 and later in the game in chapter 5, but we're jumping ahead so chapter 5 is simultaneously quite good and confusing. I really like how you get to know the mountain's weird things like spikes, spikes and spikes are actually the cause of Among Us's brain. So that explains the sussy amounts of spike usage. Hey yo, only 99% of people cannot get here. We also get to know more about Theo, a guy who is also climbing the mountain, who is probably also based on a Maddie Makes Games employee considering he uses hashtags. Well, I was taking a nonchalant mirror selfie. Watch this. You know, it's your boy Theo and this I just want to do. Hashtag bless. 
they should have known this would have aged poorly. Chapter 6 is sadly a nose dive in quality as it goes on for too long. Don't get me wrong, it's still good. The story is cool as Among Us tries to convince Battleland they should work together despite their flaws, showing some strong character development from Among Us aside, which is someone who previously admitted to literally being a redditor to Theo. Like previously said though, it's more of a highlight because the rest of the chapter is just too exhausting. The game does joke about this part feeling that way. Still, saying your level design is bad only points out your level design is bad. And now we're finally here, the summit. Among Us and Battleline work together to climb back the mountain, going meter per meter, section per section, stupid death per stupid death, and then, after 11 hours, over a thousand deaths, and 5 euros spent on the Steam store, Okay, I'm not gonna show you, you guys already know how it looks. Now that you're finished with the game, you're not finished with the game. Because you gotta go back to the B-sides and the chapters you've already been through to unlock hearts and get the chance to play chapter 8 and 9 or, you know, cheat. But I don't do that for any games. So. B-sides it is. Remember how I said climbing in the main game is kind of an afterthought? Well, in here it's just extensively and it really puts your brain to the test. The first B-side from chapter 2 was slightly easy and I only died 80 times, which is somehow less death than the entirety of my chapter 3 playthrough. But chapter 3 and onwards was actually kicking my butt, like damn, I can't believe Celeste would copy random mind level design 6 years prior. With any difficult parts of a level, you gotta make sure it's really challenging while avoiding frustration as much as possible, which Celeste handles Interestingly, the game has a lot of options, and one of those options is to disable screen shake. Remember when I pointed it out? Well, it's because I prefer to leave it off for any game I play, as I see it as a lazy way to create impact in the game. I don't think going from turtle speed to light speed is the same as violently shaking a camera, and that's my look on it. You can like screen shake in your games, but in my opinion, it's more in confidence from the designers on main aspects of their game. I feel similarly on the assist mode, for example. Yes, I'm fully aware that Celeste was made with accessibility in mind, and I do like that you can actually halve the game speed and it's the actual speed of the game and not the frame rate being changed. <coughs> we'll just not. <coughs> when it comes to the actual game, assist mode is a really good tool to help players get through the game if they just want to enjoy the message. A lot of people are quite emotionally attached to Celeste. Every time you go on social media and look up Celeste fan art or something, it's often called a comfort game and I can definitely see why. Anxiety and depression is something a lot of people struggle with, sometimes even daily or because of disorders. And so to have some sort of thing that they can cling on to remediate that is cool. Made cooler by the fact that, like mentioned, Maddie, overcoming his own struggle is communicated well as the story in Celeste. Embracing your negative side rather than ignoring it altogether is one of the first steps to understanding yourself and feeling better as a person. In 2018, I had declared to myself I will probably not like the game, and yet I ended up liking it to the point it's in my top 15 ever. Back then I was very burned out on pixel art games using correct and good looking art styles, and so I took Celeste to face value and just assumed it was lucky to be in the spotlight while incredible platformers from that era are unnoticed to this day because they don't use that one palette from Ice Sprite. But as I looked deep into Celeste, I realized there was more to the story, and I can safely say that Maddie made a great game about Among Us. Yeesh, Among Us came at the same year as Celeste.